Good morning. Welcome. Hey, Jeremiah prophesied that if the king of Judah did not obey God's command to him, that the Babylonians would invade and Jerusalem would fall. Did Jeremiah prophesy the truth? Our reading is at Jeremiah chapter 39, verses 1 to 10. And after all these, these presentations coming up to this time, we are at the fall of Jerusalem. Here it is. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and besieged it. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, on the ninth day of the month, the city was penetrated. Then all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate. Nergal, Sherezar, Samgar, Nebo, Sarsakim, Rabsaris, Nergal, Sarazar, Rabmag, with the rest of the princes of the king of Babylon. So it was when Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and all the men of war saw them, that they fled and went out of the city by night by way of the king's garden, by the gate between the two walls, and he went out by way of the plain. But the Chaldean army pursued them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and when they had captured him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where he pronounced judgment on him. Then the king of Babylon killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes in Riblah. The king of Babylon also killed all the nobles of Judah. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with bronze fetters to carry him off to Babylon. And the Chaldeans burned the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive to Babylon the remnant of the people who remained in the city and those who defected to him with the rest of the people who remained. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left in the land of Judah the poor people who had nothing and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. So this is the fall of Jerusalem. This is it. This is what everything could have been prevented but it wasn't prevented because the king was indecisive, did not do what he could have done to stop this from happening. The day is what we would call July 18, 586 BC in our timing. Jerusalem has been besieged by the Babylonians for 30 months, 30 months, about two and a half years. Almost everything we've been looking at these past several presentations has been happening in that, that two year period, two and a half year period. Jeremiah, the, the false prophets, Zedekiah, they're all trapped in the walls of Jerusalem. Sadly, King Zedekiah rejected all of Jeremiah's uh, initiatives, all of God's initiatives through his servant Jeremiah to turn and change direction. He just did. Instead, he listened to the voices of the princes of Jerusalem, the rich and the powerful. Do not surrender. And that's what he did. He did not go along with the plan that, that God would have preserved the city with. And God refused to protect Jerusalem. And I mean, remember, the, the army of Babylon is there because God's people have chosen disobedience. They are there because the, the, the kings, the princes, the prophets, the priests... All the institutions that God has set up to build the people spiritually, they've all become corrupted, and now God is going to sweep it all away. And here is now the actual uh, fruition of that. So now it all comes tumbling down. The king is taken, blinded, his children are slain. The princes, they're all taken. The rich people, they're all, gonna, they're all carried off to Babylon. Their houses are burned. This is the end. This is the, the culmination of their disobedience. God is sweeping away all their influence, and he's going to re reconstitute it with different people, different leaders. Mark this, what Jeremiah said would happen, happens. This is the fall of Jerusalem. The unrelenting apostasy is now meeting its judgment. So this is the end. Jeremiah prophesied the truth, and tomorrow morning we'll see what happens with Jeremiah. But let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we make our choices. It's your plan that we would take choices. We would choose, choose between one thing and another thing. Try to choose what's right. So Lord, we make our own futures. Every person in the hearing of my voice is making their own future. They're not forced into some future you've pre-made for them. Help us, Lord, to be teamed with you, to make our futures with you. Lord, you be our leader. We pray that strong cases like the one we've been reading about in the, in the prophet Jeremiah are not needed in our case. Lord, help us to be responsive to your leadings, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, God's prophet told the truth. The people did not respond to those warnings. Now they're ended. And God is still on his throne today. God be with you in all that you do.